Hey everyone, so here's uh, the Q tutorial that I promised a little bit ago. It's super simple. I'm going to show you it right now. So as you can see, we have, let me just go on creative. We have two sides here, a blue and a red side. Um, we also have um, inventory layouts or what are they called actually? Yeah, no, inventory layouts, um, which you can just view by clicking these NPCs. So blue team and red team. Um, and besides that, these NPCs don't do anything. It's just kind of a showcase. Um, Here's our main queue NPC. So if we click this, we can join the queue as it says. It says added to the queue and this will update. Um, and then we can get removed from the queue as well. Now you can have a system like a timer or first one to kill the other player or maybe first one to capture a point will end the game. Just so I can show you, this does include a function to end the game and reset and teleport everyone back. Okay, so this might be a little annoying to see, but on my left is my main account and on my right is my alt account. So I'm going to take my main and join up in the queue. It will say added the queue. And if you're their player, you can also see that it says one out of two. Now for my alt, if I click on him, it will say game started and will be sent into our arena. So as you can see on my alt, I am on the blue team. I spawned in the blue area and I have the blue armor. And on my other account, or my main, I guess, um, I'm in the red area with red armor. Now we can go up to the end game NPC. And again, this can be changed. This could be a timer, PvP, something like that. But if we end the game... It'll teleport us to the spawn point, which is what I just set. It'll clear our inventory, and in the, like, sort of back end, it'll also, oops, it'll also reset our stats, so it won't bug out. I've made sure to include checks for joining and leaving, so if someone were to leave during a match or similar, then it won't break the game. But yeah, I'm going to show you how I did this. Okay, so here I have a housing editor page. Now, a link to this will be in the description, but I recommend you watch through just so I can show you what it means. If you don't really like Housing Editor, in the Discord, in the Community Guides forum area, I'll have all this code converted to HT HTSL. So if you would prefer that, then you can look there too. But anyways, again, it looks kind of complex, but don't worry, it's super simple, and I'll go into it right now. So here we have our events. So, so if we go back to our game, go to the housing menu, go to house settings, event actions. These are different events that run when certain things happen in your house. So if someone kills, then you can run code. If someone dies, then you can run code. Join, leave, fish caught, stuff like that, etc. So just set up these accordingly. For the join event, we set in queue to zero and set their team to zero. Team is explained later, but in queue is just a stat to determine if they're in the queue or not. Here's our on damage function. So using a poison loop, which I'll show you real quick how to set up. If you don't know, I did make a poison loop tutorial video. But anyways, go to house settings, go to event actions, and then the player join. Just add a potion effect that has poison for 2 million seconds on level 10 and make sure override existing effects is on. If your if your house does include respawning, then add that to the respawn event. Otherwise, that's fine. So in the on damage event, which is in here, you can see we have a conditional here and I'll show you in housing editor what that is. So we check if the damage causes poison, which if it is, we canceled the event so the player actually doesn't take damage. And we triggered the function Q handler, which is explained later. If you're having issues with the poison loop, like isn't like ticking, go to house settings, go to PVP damage settings and make sure wither or poison slash wither damage is on. Okay, so that's the on damage event. Now in the leave event, this is to prevent the game from breaking if someone were to leave in the middle of an event. First, we check if they're in the queue and the game is currently active. Um, this is a global stat, which we'll also explain a bit later. Now, this means that they left while in the game. So let's set in queue to zero for that player and trigger the end game function, which is also explained a bit later. We have another conditional in here, which checks if they're in the queue and active game is equal to zero, which means the game's not active, but they were in the queue. We're going to set their queue to zero as and just subtract the global stat in queue by one, which is this stat right here. Okay, so that's the events. Now we're going to move on to the function. So, so this is the join queue function. As you can see, I put a little note here. Function that happens when the player should request to be queued up, like an NPC or join command. If we go to the NPC here and check it's what's inside, we have the trigger function join queue. So in join queue, we test if the game is currently active. Which, if it is, then let's let them know that there's a currently active game, and let's exit out. Exit means no other code will run, so all the code down here will, won't run. Otherwise, which means the game is not currently active, then let's set the player's in queue stat to 1, and add 1 to the global in queue stat, which determines how many players are in the queue. And we can just let the player know that they've been added to the queue. And then we'll exit to just stop the rest of the code from running. So we have another conditional here where we check if in queue was equal to zero. If it's not, meaning that they are in the queue, then we'll set their queue to zero and we'll subtract the global queue by one. And then we'll just let them know that they've been removed from the queue. The exit here is not needed, so I'm going to take that away. I just bet I had more when I was working on this. Okay, so now here is part of the poison loop, the queue handler. 
So the queue handler, in order to set that up, go to your housing menu, or well, I guess you already set that up with the event action, but it's in here where we have the poison loop set up, we trigger the function queue handler. Queue handler is super simple, all we do is check if there is not an active game and if in queue is greater than or equal to 2, meaning our max, meaning there's a max amount of people in the queue. Then we'll set an active game to 1 and start the game for all players, which is a function. So here's our start game function. I have a little explanation up here, so this is triggered when a game starts. It'll decide teams and teleport them to their respective areas. There is a player stat called team, and, on, and this is defining what it means. So if team is 1, then you're on the red team. If team is blue, then you're on the blue team. Then team is 2, then you're on the blue team. Okay, so reminder that this function is triggered for all players so sending this chat message will broadcast that the game has started but to check if they're in the queue we do that here so we match a conditional here if red team which is a global stat is less than or equal to blue team meaning meaning that there is either no members on either team or there's too many members on blue team so we need to give red team some members this should work if your queue allows for more than two players However, that's just how I have it set up. It just divides them equally. Well, to the best of its ability, at least. We also check if the team has not already been set up and to make sure that they are actually in the queue. So this is the red team. So we set their team set to one, which as we can see up here equals red. We increase red team by one to show how many people are on that team. We apply the inventory layout red team, which if you're curious, if we go to house settings and inventory layouts, I set up two inventory layouts, one for red team, um, which is, has the armor and one for blue team. Same thing with the items, just different colored armor. And then finally, we teleport them to custom coordinates. Now this is red team, which means that they should be teleported here looking this way. And then when I show you blue, it will be here looking this way. Okay, so that's it for that conditional. We're gonna move on to this conditional, which is the same thing, but for blue team. So we check if blue is less than or equal to red team, make sure that they don't have a team already set up and that they are actually in the queue. And then we'll set team to two, blue team increased by one, apply the blue team inventory layout and teleport them to those coordinates. Now here's our end game function. So end game is super simple. It just resets everything and ends the game as you can see here. So we set our active game to zero. We set the amount of players in queue to zero. We set the amount of people on red team and blue team to zero. And then we check here if they are in the queue and they have a team set up. So team is greater than zero and in queue is equal to one. Then we'll set both of those stats to zero. Oh, sorry, we also have it match any condition. So if a bug happened and only one of these is set, then it will still remove them and set them back to where they need to be. Uh, and then we'll just teleport them to a house spawn. These could be custom coordinates, maybe the lobby, something like that. But I just have it just for this tutorial. So yeah, there we go. I'm just going to show you real quick if we queue up on our alt account, then it should send us into the game once again. And yeah, that's pretty much it for this tutorial. If you have any questions or run into the ish any issues, you can ask in the comments. However, I do recommend you ask in the Discord. It's just easier there. But yeah, I know you guys have wanted this for a while, so I'm, I'm glad to finally give it to you. I hope to see some cool mini game or team based housing is out there. And again, if housing editor is not your thing, there is HTSL code in the Discord. Thanks for watching. See you guys.